got a unanimous decision. Adrian Broner, just like I thought he was going to win. Molina looks shot to me. I, don't, I, don't, I think he's done, in my opinion. Um, you know, he landed a couple of good shots here and there, but, you know, it wasn't, wasn't enough to win. So, I'm right on my first prediction. Adrian Broner. He's one time win. Thurman. Wins unanimously, gets a knockdown in the fight. Guerrero showed some heart, but you know, it just wasn't enough, man. And uh, I'm two for two tonight. So the last fight of the night, Abner Mares defeats Arturo Santo Reyes. Um, turned out to be a little bit better than I thought. Um, you know, um, but I, I, you know, Mares did do his thing and he won the fight convincingly. And uh, hey, G Funk's three for three tonight. So, there it is. Alright guys, G-Funk here. Still battling this cold that I got. So, I'm going to try and get this in as quick as possible. But we're going to go in order here. We're going to start with Adrian Broner versus uh, John Molina. And like I said in the prediction, man, I didn't know how much Molina had left in him. Uh, he's been in some brutal fights. Um, even his last fight against Lucas Matisse. Um, you know, it was a war. Came up short in that fight. And... Um, you know, he just didn't look good to me in there, man. He, the confidence looked gone. Uh, he just, you know, he just looked shot to me, man. And, um, you know, Broner, uh, not to take anything away from Broner, but he, you know, he took care of business. I think he fought um, much smarter than he's fought uh, recently. Um, you know, he did get clipped with some with some big shots, but, you know, he he stands right there and he's willing he's willing to exchange with some guys and you know that's gonna happen man he uh, I don't, he doesn't have the legs of a, of a of a Floyd Mayweather which is a guy who tries to emulate in the ring and um we know he doesn't have the defense of a of a Mayweather and um but you know it was um, entertaining you know in a few spots when Molina decided to let his hands go but um, Broner was just too fast man just way too fast with his jab. Um, you know, he was unloading some good crisp, crisp and fast combinations on Molina. And, you know, Molina just, you know, he was just in there looking for the knockout, man. He just, you know, he's just trying to land one big shot. And, I mean, I mean, you can't do that with, with guys that are uh, much faster than you, you know, and try to time them with just one shot. I mean, you got to you gotta try to, you know, work things. And, I mean, when he, when Molina would throw his, I noticed one thing early in the fight, when Molina would throw his jab, you know, he was landing it. You know, you could jab with the Adrian Broner because I noticed a lot of the times when he jabs, he, you know, he doesn't bring his hand back up, you know, to where it should be. So I could see some guys countering that jab with the right hand over the top or, like I said, just jabbing with him. And, uh, you know, Molina, I don't know, man. The guy, he didn't look like the gladiator at all. You know, he's I think he's done, man. Um, I think this was his last opportunity to... Uh, you know, showcase his skills or his toughness, whatever you want to call it, on the main stage. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, hey, he, he he failed big time, man. And Broner took care of business like he's supposed to. And uh, I know some of the fans at the end were, you know, booing him for, uh, you know, staying away from Molina in the last round. But, you know, he knew Molina was desperate and he was just looking to land one big shot. And it was that was smart on Broner's part to stay away. But, uh, you know, he dominated the fight, man. Adrian Broner, um, you know, what's next for him? I know they just talked to him at the end of the whole show, and he said he's going to fight in June in Cincinnati. So, you know, his hometown, we'll see who he's got lined up to fight. Um, but, uh, yeah, he did his thing tonight and won convincingly. So now we can go on and uh, talk about Robert the Ghost Guerrero and uh, Keith One-Time Thurman. Uh, now, this fight was, um, as far as the scorecards go, it was, it was about the same as the Broner fight, but um, some of these rounds were more competitive uh, because, you know, we know Robert Guerrero has tremendous heart. He has a, a hell of a chin, man. This guy could take a, a hell of a shot, you know. Um, and, you know, he showed heart after he got knocked down. I believe it was the 10th round or something like that, 9th or 10th round, and he came out the next round. And, uh, you know, he got Thurman against the ropes and, you know, started doing some work. But it just wasn't enough, man. He wasn't, he was uh, out quick all night long. Um, you know, Thurman, to me, looked real good tonight, man. Um, 
you know, I've seen him using his legs when he had to, uh, you know, uh, setting up some good traps and, 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 you know, hitting Guerrero and getting out of the way, you know, um, I think his problem, the problem I had with Keith, the only problem I had with Keith Thurman tonight was that I think that he was too busy looking for the knockout early, and I think that's what hurt him late in the fight because, to me, he looked like he got a little bit tired at the end, and I think that he should definitely try to uh, take take something off of those punches early in the fight because, um, you know, you're not going to knock everybody out, man. We know that. Um, especially when you start stepping up a competition like he's doing right now. Uh, you know, you're not going to stop everybody. And um, you got to learn. I think he has to learn to take something off of his shots. Um, you know, not throw everything with full power. Because, you know, when you throw with full power a lot of the time, even if you are landing and that guy's not going nowhere, I mean, that could take a lot out of you later in the fight. So I think that was something that hurt Keith Thurman. Um, later in the fight, but he still won, you know, convincingly, in, in my opinion. Um, Guerrero, um, for me, I think that he should definitely try to move down to 140 if he can. Uh, I just don't think welterweight is, is his division, man. He Ever since he moved up there, he, he's been very flat-footed, uh, much slower than he was at the lighter weights. Um, you know, he's he's gotten this macho mentality now where he wants to stand there and brawl with everybody and you know, I think I think a lot of it has to do with his dad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean Ruben Guerrero's a funny guy, but he just you know <laughs> the things he says are just silly sometimes. Like like I heard Marv Albert say something like, Oh uh, Ruben Guerrero said that Keith Thurman should change his nickname from one time to run time, you know, he's gonna run. I mean, fuck, if you know he's gonna run then why don't you set up your camp and your training around cutting off the ring? How about that? You know, instead of complaining that a guy's not going to stand right in front of you and let him punch, you know? That's just that's just stupid, man. And I, I can't stand when people make that excuse. Oh, the guy's just running. Make him fight, you know? You know, it's Guerrero's job to make Thurman fight if he wanted that kind of fight. Uh, you could see, like, at the end of the fight... At the end of the, you know, the later rounds, he got him against the ropes. You know, he had opportunities in the last couple rounds to do damage. But, you know, it was just too late. So, you know, I'm sick and tired of hearing this excuse about, you know, this guy's running or that guy's running. You know, do something about it. It's your job to do something about it. So, you know, for me, Guerrero, I think he should definitely try to move down. I don't think he can, um, you know, I don't think he can use this macho man mentality at 140, I don't think he carried his power with him. Um, we all we know he can take a good shot, but um, you know that's about it that he's shown here at uh, welterweight. But um, you know, as far as Keith Thurman goes, I was impressed with him, and you know I am willing to put one foot on the bandwagon right now, and I would definitely like to see him, uh, you know, step up in competition again. Uh, you know, there's Sean Porter who's in that division. There's a Kel Brook, there's uh, Amir Khan, Timothy Bradley, Marcos Maidana. Uh, you know, we got two big guys, Mayweather and Pacquiao. You know, we'll see if one of them want to get in the ring with Thurman. But, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But I would like to see him fight any of those guys, man. Um, so let's get on to the last um, fight of the night with Abner Mares and uh, Arturo Santo Reyes. Um, Fight was a little bit better than I thought. There was a knockdown in the second round from uh, Abner Mares. Um, you know, he looked pretty good. Uh, you know, he run, was running off some good crisp combinations. Uh, he landed a lot of big overhand rights. And, um, you know, that dude was very tough and was very game uh, that he fought. Uh, I had never seen that guy fight before, but he, um, you know, he didn't look too bad. And um, he did... Um, you know, show some good feistiness, and he, he threw some very good combinations also at Mares, and, you know, he made the fight entertaining, man, these guys were, you know, it was back and forth, but for me, I thought Mares won it, you know, pretty clear, and, um, you know, I know he said after the fight that, you know, he don't want to make no excuses that he uh, was uh, sick under the weather, and, you know, if he's got what I got, trust me, he feels like absolute crap, you know, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, he got the job done anyway. So, I would like to see him move on, you know, fight some of the other guys at 126. Um, 
you know, we'll see what's what's in store for Abner Modest. But I would like to see him move on, maybe fight a Walters or a Donaire or, you know, one of the, one of the better guys at 126. There's a Lomachenko there. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I want to see good fights, man. And, you know, Modest is a guy who, you know, he's he's not that bad skill-wise. You know, he does got some skills. And, um, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing him in there with some of those guys. So... That's my. Those are my post fights from the predictions that I made. My post. This is my post fight video. Um, you know, I was three for three on my picks, and um, you know, I have to say I enjoyed the card overall. It was uh, um, good to see boxing back on regular TV, and um, you know, the atmosphere looked cool. Uh, the setup looked cool. Uh, you know, I noticed they did block off a lot of seats in the back. You know, it almost had like a a pro wrestling type entrance way for the fighters and stuff so um you know we'll see what happens um from here on out with this uh you know premier boxing champions thing you know there's some good fights coming up next week so g funk's got to get to work on his predictions for those videos so you guys go ahead and get at me and let me know what you think man i'm out